Hi ladies and gents, Pond here with another video for Rise of Empires, Ice and Fire. Thank you so much for your previous likes, comments and subscriptions to the channel. If you haven't already subscribed, why not do click on that subscribe button and ring the bell so you can get notifications whenever I'm dropping videos on the channel, which is daily. Now on to the topic today, which is Orange Heroes Ranked. So we're going to be looking, I've now reviewed all of those 10 Orange Heroes that you can initially get in the game. And uh, people have been asking for a rankings video, so here it is. So let's get started. And first off, the first, the two heroes that I want to discuss are Rough Rider and Yamaraja. Now, if you've watched my individual hero guides, this won't come as a surprise to anyone. Both of these guys, they're you know, Rough Rider is a front row hero mainly. Yamaraja is middle row. They are okay at what they do, but they're not really strong in any area so like rough rider has the extra hp on his sixth skill but he doesn't give extra hp to everyone else on his seventh skill he gives resistance um, his skills are pretty low percentage based um, he doesn't do any massive amount of uh, countering neither of these heroes do that yamaraja he's got that mixed range of uh, skill ranges where his skills are range two three and five so you can't put him on the back row because hit two of those skills wouldn't be fully effective and though Yamaraja does a decent amount of damage he's still not going to be your kind of first he's not going to be your first and second choice on on either row and that's why these two are ranked at the bottom they're basically wherever you're going to put them they would be your third potentially fourth choice out of these group of heroes um, and that's why they're ranked so low let's look at the next hero it is Heaven's Justice. So Heaven's Justice is one of the back row heroes. And some people might be surprised that he's ranked so low. But my reason, my thinking behind this is with HJ, his skills, yeah, okay, like you've got good range. He is perfectly suited to be a back row hero. Um, but skill two doesn't do anything extra. His skill three lowers resistance for two turns um, for all the enemy squads. So that is a decent amount of um, debuffing to the opponent. That's why I would definitely rate him higher than the two heroes below him. Um, he has extra might on his sixth skill. He has extra might on his seventh skill. That's what you'd expect. His eighth skill is the big problem for me. 55% chance to do a lot of damage, but only on three turns of the battle. One of those turns being the eighth turn. So how many times are you actually going to see this skill activate three times in a battle i don't think it's very often you know there can be instances where it doesn't activate at all if it doesn't activate at all you're relying on just two other skills for him to do anything in the battle he's supposed to be the hero doing you the most damage and that's why i just don't rate him quite as highly as um the others above him in this list the next group that i want to talk about to be honest, I found it really hard to separate um, these heroes, which is why I've put them together. So the first hero is Dual Blades. Um, middle row hero, she's um, she's got the extra resistance, both on her sixth skill and on her seventh skill. She does a really good amount of damage and her skills have good chances. Her second and fifth skill are both 50% chance. Um, that's why I would rate her higher than um, Heaven's Justice even, because she does have a good chance to do damage each time. Her eighth skill has suppression in it, which is the best form of CC, crowd control. It will stop an opponent's um, squad from both doing basic attacks and skill attacks. So if that's activating even just two or three times in a battle, and if it targets the enemy's back row, like say if it targeted a Hurricane or a Zoro, that could um, really make a significant difference in the battle to you. Um, so I think she is a really nice middle row hero when you're starting in the game. Uh, because she has all that extra resistance, she would be kind of like, if you don't pick up a Rochi North Rage or Rough Rider in the beginning, you could use Dual Blades on your front row if you absolutely had to as well. Um, but it's not ideal. The next hero is Hurricane. So Hurricane is the second back row hero in the general group, orange group. And for me, I like him over Heads of Justice because you just get more guaranteed damage. Now, he doesn't do a lot. His his second skill is a 40% chance. His his fifth skill is an 80% chance. And then his eighth skill is 
um, a 50% chance. He doesn't do anything else. Okay, that is his downside. Like he's got the extra 20% might and on his sixth skill, the extra 30% might for all of the Legion on his seventh skill. So he's not going to do anything else. He's not debuffing a, a, the opponent. He's not buffing your own troops. He's not supporting. But what he is doing is as of that back row, he is going to kill your opponent's troops. This hail skill, 80% chance you're going to see this activating probably six or seven times in a battle. Okay, it's only small amounts of damage, 260% each time, but it is near enough guaranteed for an orange hero, and that's what you want. You can have Hurricane that is doing you some damage, or you can have Heaven's Justice who may do you damage, and that's why I would definitely rate Hurricane higher. On to the next hero, North Rage. North Rage is a front row hero. He is... Definitely a really, really nice hero. High levels of damage on all his skills. Second skill, 525%. Uh, fifth skill, 646%. 60% chance as well, even though it does require one turn of prep. And similar to um, Dual Blades, he has this damage with suppression element in his eighth skill as well. So a nice double effect, um, which will really impact. His sixth skill gives 7% extra HP, which is the most important attribute for troops surviving uh, the higher your hp the less likely they're going to die basically in a battle um, and then his seventh skill has the 15 percent extra hp for all of the troops in the legion so he is for a front row hero he's doing everything you want him to do he's very tanky defensive uh, but he does also do a lot of damage so um, he's a really nice com co he's got a really nice combination going on there and then next up in this group is orochi so Orochi, similarly, he is going to do a lot of damage as well, like North Rage does. 40% um, chance to do 405% damage. He also does a bit of debuffing to the opponent, weakening them. His fifth skill will do 540% damage and will silence for two turns, which is um, obviously going to be the most countering crowd control that you will get from an orange hero. Um, but in, the, in these general seven orange heroes... If this activates twice in a battle, it makes a huge difference in the early stages of the game, for sure. And then his ape skill, it's just pure damage. It's slightly lower chance, but it's a high amount of damage, 644%. And then he's got the same elements that North Rage does. This 7% extra HP on his 6th skill, the 15% extra HP on his 7th skill. If you wanted to be super defensive, you could put... Uh, like North Rage on your front row or Rochi on the second row. They're still both going to do you a fair amount of damage. They're gonna, you're going to have a load of HP. The seventh skill does stack, so your troops in the in the Legion would have 30% extra HP. And um, people ask me who's better between North Rage and Orochi. I just, I can't really, in my mind, I just can't separate them. They both, they both do very similar things. They're both very defensive. For me, you, you want either, either of them on your front row at the beginning of the game is absolutely fine. They're both going to do a really nice job for you. So that leaves the last three heroes, which are the three heroes that you get that are harder to recruit, the orange heroes that are hero spe uh, troop specific. So first off, we've got Demon Spear. Demon Spear is the footman specific hero, and she is generally a front row hero as well. Her second skill does a lot of damage 545 percent ferocious damage to two random enemy squads so you have to put her on the front row because it's only got an effective range of two and it does a significant amount of debuffing minus 80 percent might for two turns you compare that to the debuffs that the or other heroes do it's only like 20 percent 30 percent this is 80 percent so it's a significant upgrade um on on those other heroes the only downside for her is that that debuff is kind of critical because her she doesn't have extra HP. She doesn't have a lot of extra uh, might and resistance, just a 15% on both here. And then on her ape skill, again, unfortunately, like Heaven's Justice's skill, it's only applicable for three turns. It's 70% chance, though, so it's higher, to silence two random enemy squads for one turn. Um, so this can, again, do a lot of... It, it does the most... It's, this is one of the best... Uh, countering CCing skills of all these orange heroes you've got the chance to silence your opponent six times there twice over three turns um, her seventh skill is just extra resistance of course with these um, troop specific orange heroes they have five percent extra 
on their seventh skill and 5% extra on their third and fourth skill, which is going to give you, when it all adds up, um, you know, those are the little benefits and their skills are just that little bit better. So the other hero, the next hero is Rogue. So he is the cavalry specific hero. Um, I've actually got rid of Rogue in my main now because I've got so many cavalry S heroes. I broke, I broke him up for the wisdom middles, etc. So with Rogue again, you're going to want to put him on the middle row for your cavalry legion. He is better than putting a Yamaraja or, or a dual blades. You're getting that extra 5% um, resist, uh, resistance, might, and then I might on his seventh skill. His second skill, only 30% chance to do a decent amount of damage, but it will reduce skill damage, which is key. That's that's going to be what that is one of the better debuffs is reducing skill damage. And his fifth skill is a prep skill. It's the he's the only hero in this group of orange heroes who has a prep skill. Prep skills are harder to stop, unlike all the other heroes who just have combat skills that can be silenced and suppressed. Um, so this can't be silenced, and it's going to activate every battle for the first four turns of the battle, um, reducing enemy squads' uh, combat skill damage by 35%. So he's significantly debuffing your opponents there hopefully providing support basically to all of your legion his sixth and seventh skills aren't anything too great but he is giving extra cavalry speed uh, so if you have rogue in your squad you're probably going to be starting if you're up against uh, archers or footmen then you're definitely going to be starting that battle first that's always a bit of a benefit and then his eighth skill 40 percent chance to attack two times um, hack and slash it does really nice damage uh, 700 and whatever 40 percent damage um, so that's a lot of damage and it's it can be targeted so it, it is possible for instance someone's asked me like you could put rogue in the back row of your legion and that skill would only target the front row which would obviously do a lot of damage to your opponent's front row it would probably collapse quicker with rogue but you would ideally put him in the middle row to be honest and just have like a hurricane or a heaven's justice behind him uh, so that just leaves us with one last hero, which is Zoro. So Zoro, in my mind, why do I rate him slightly better than the other two? Um, Zoro is also obviously a troop-specific hero. He is the archer's specific hero. And I rate him better just because of his second and eighth skill. So his second skill, 50% chance to deal 641% damage, so a decent amount of damage to the enemy squad with the least amount of units within range. And his ape skill, 40% chance to deal 394% damage to, again, the enemy squad with the least unit count within range and makes them take 18% more damage lasting two turns. Plus his fifth skill does has a 50% chance, so it's high chance, and um, will do damage to two random enemy squads, but then gives... 30% bonus damage to his own squad lasting two turns. So that is quite a large boost to his damage. And 50% chance this skill is likely to activate four or five times in a battle. It lasts two turns. This is effectively, this extra bonus damage is effectively going to probably work most battles for the whole of the battle, covering all eight turns or at least seven turns. And then with skills two and five, he's there's only, I think, well, there's no other hero in the game that has two skills that specifically target the legion with the fewest troops. And this he's effectively like it's a finishing skill, it's an execution skill. If you're all he's most likely to I think if you've got Zoro in your um legion in the early parts of the game, archers are the best killers. They're going to be targeting all on that front row, plus your basic attacks. His skills are going to be targeting on the on the front row. All your basic attacks are targeting on front rows. And you're probably most likely to then collapse that front row if you have Zoro in your, in your squad. And once you've collapsed a row, then you've only got two left. You lose a hero, so you've only got two heroes that could be attacking against you you're concentrating your firepower on just those last two squads uh, and of course Zoro is focusing on the one that has the lowest amount of troops so for me he's the most effective hero out of this group of orange heroes and that's why I rate him higher uh, and of course you get the extra resistance might uh, from skills three and four and on his seventh skill he's giving extra five percent might as well so he's he's buffing those archers even further and yeah, I just think that's why he's the most effective for me. So um, that is 
my Orange Hero ranking guide, guys. I'd be obviously everyone uses Orange Orange Heroes in the game. Quite often, you're using them for long periods um, until you're able to, you know, get at least seven skills unlocked on your S heroes. And um, you know, one of the most common questions I get is about, you know, which Orange Heroes are best. How do you rank them? What formations do you want them in? So um, those are kind of. I've, I've been really keen to uh, do this Orange Hero Guide Caesar series and then also this finish it with this ranking video. So I hope you've enjoyed the series and this video. If you have, please do click on that like. And um, if you have any comments or or disagree with, you know, this is just my opinion. Of course, um, I'd be interested to hear if you guys think, um, you know, from your experiences, you would rank them different. Please do pop your comments down below. And if you could please share my channel in your Alliance chat, province chat through line whatsapp viber discord whatever you use to communicate with your fellow players in the game that'd be absolutely brilliant and if you haven't already why not click on that subscribe and ring the bell so you can get notifications of whenever i'm dropping videos on the channel which is daily lots more content to come got my eden season rewards um coming uh, next week so i'm excited for that and um thank you so much for watching that's it for now and i will see you soon